do you dream of being a millionaire? That's probably why I clicked on this video. And if yes, then you're gonna to want to listen very closely to what I have to say, because I'm going to share with you some of the money secrets that you need to know. The rules of the game, if you will things that helped me personally become a millionaire. And this is not a video to say, go out and make this trade, start this side hustle. This is what has helped me. And that is a framework around money, a framework around wealth creation, an understanding of the rules of the game. Because the rules of the game, they're the same for everyone, but we all get dealt different cards in life. However, in this game, the great part is that anyone can win with the hand that they're dealt if they know the rules of the game, if they understand those rules. If you can create a process, a system, a set of principles for making the right decisions, then the right outcomes are very likely to follow. So if you're serious about making your first million dollars, then listen up. Number one, let me subvert your expectations here because hitting a million dollars, is just a milestone, you keep going, money is a journey, not a destination. If you are looking for money to make you happy, then I got some bad news for you because it's not going to. Me personally, I'm basically the same person that I was before I became a millionaire, except now I have more money, more freedom, more options. It's great, it's all cool, right? And you might say, but, 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 Lark, why not just cash out? Go live on a beach somewhere, man. Because I love the game. That's why making a million felt great but it was never the end goal. It was about building a sustainable business and educating and doing all kinds of fun stuff like that, having a purpose. Number two, there are no limits when it comes to money. This was something that hit me quickly on my money-making journey. There are no limits to money and there is more money at the top than you can possibly freaking imagine. So remove the barriers that say, oh, there's just not enough money out there in the world for me to get rich. Because let me tell you, there is. There is definitely enough for you. There are people who walk around this world with half million dollar watches strapped to their wrists who drive two, three, four, five million dollar cars. And for them buying that stuff, it's like buying a coffee for you. It's just, here's a little bit of money. Money is not rare. Money is super common. So always believe that money is abundant because it is and that it can flow to you because it can. Remember, the people who have money, they're no different than you. They eat, sleep, crap, they have 24 hours a day. The only difference is that they have built systems to allow them to earn dramatically more than you. And if they did it, then you can too because remember, you're really not so different from those people. Number three, there's always more money. So do not be afraid to spend money. I'm not saying to blow every last cent that you have on a sweet weekend in Vegas and go broke. No, but you can treat yourself to nice things. You can get that watch when you can afford it. When you can afford it, don't buy it on debt or anything crazy like that or spend 50% of your income on it. You can get that nice trip. Of course, only do this when it doesn't create debt. Only do it when you can really afford to do these things. Once you cross that financial barrier, the frame changes from fear of spending to actually abundance, knowing there's always gonna be more money. The reality is money will come to you, right? For those who know how to make it, it will come. Reminds me of this. If you took away everyone's money, say 100 people, you dumped them on some island and give everyone an equal sum of money. So everybody gets $5,000 or whatever it might be. My guess is that in a few months time, the people who had money before will most certainly have it all again. And the people who were broke before will most certainly be broke again. Reminder, it's the systems. It's the principles. That's what makes people wealthy and allows them to not just get it, but keep it. Number four, money flows to where attention goes. If you spend your weekends just getting ducked up with your mates, playing video games, hanging out with your high school buddies in your 20s, still, still acting like they're 15, yeah, or just generally kind of screwing around, then you're most likely on a path that will leave you in a terrible physical state, lots of mental stress, but also probably you're going to be broke. You're just gonna be getting by, living pay to paycheck. That quick dopamine, has a really high price tag in the long run. Been there, done that, don't recommend it. Now compare that with someone who works out daily, spends their free time working on some kind of a side hustle that they know is gonna work out or if it doesn't work out, they learned a lot and they're gonna go on to the next one, that one's gonna work. They read books on money, they read books on business, they build systems, right? They cultivate a friend group of people who talk about money, who talk about unlocking the secrets of success, not what the latest video game is, man. Which person do you think is more likely to get rich and to live their dreams? You know the answer. The sooner you set your standards higher, the sooner you're going to be 
financially free. By the way, before we get into the next secret here, every single week, I want to mention this, every single week my team and I write the Wealth Mastery Newsletter. This is a crypto investor report. And look, I get it, I get it. Life's busy, you got kids, wife, job, dog, all that stuff. This newsletter is designed for you. My team and I spend 40 hours a week on this newsletter, all so that you can read the latest of what's happening in these markets, altcoins, DeFi, charts, and much, much more. And the best part is, you can sign up for free. Yes, I said free. Links down below where you can get started. Number five, learn the rules of the money game. Because the truth is that money is a game and it is one of the best games you can play because no matter what job you do, you have to understand this about money. No matter what job you do, you are playing the money game, whether you want to say or not or whatever, we all need money to live in this world. So you might as well go all in and play the money game for real and put your mind and time on tasks that will make you millions of dollars and provide financial freedom and security for you and your family instead of barely being able to pay the bills. Learn the rules of the game. Learn the rules of money. Learn the way that money works. Who earns it? Who loses it? Why? How to use debt, how to compound interest, how to build a business that makes actual cash flow, putting money in your pocket every month. The path to massive wealth is a well-walked path. All you need to do is follow it and take inspiration from those who have already gone there. Number six, learn when to say no. This is something that has proven itself to me time and time and time again to be true. The power of no has kept me out of trouble so many times and kept me focused and put money in my bank and given me more time to be free and it's done that more often than not. I mean, yeah, sure, say yes to some things, obviously, but you'll pretty quickly learn that there are way, way more opportunities out there than time and money will actually allow. And besides, yay, saying yes to things can also get you into trouble sometimes. You gotta be careful of that. You gotta think about that flip side, right? All those times when I did say yes, I said yes to too many things, I felt super overwhelmed, or I said yes to things that were just actually, in hindsight, terrible decisions, bad investments, and all the rest of that. Some of those still haunt me to this day. So guard the gates of your mind, guard the gates of your wealth, because just because you can say yes to some opportunity, definitely doesn't mean that you should. In fact, most of the time, you probably shouldn't. Number seven, don't take money advice from people who don't have any. And I know this is pretty obvious, but most people do take money advice from people who are totally broke, you know? Most people don't have a lot of money and that's just the way it is in the world. Your parents, your friends, your coworkers, your relatives, many of these people don't have and never will have money. Just the way it is, guys. The good news is, is that even if you don't have those rich people in your life that you can get money advice from, you can actually find those people. Go to conferences on crypto and stocks and stuff like this, real estate, join mastermind groups. You can also tap directly into the minds of people like Ray Dalio by just buying their books where they literally lay out page by page by page the secrets of their success. Who do you think will give you better money advice? Multi-billionaire Ray Dalio or your broke ass alcoholic uncle? I mean, we love our broke ass alcoholic uncle, but he's broke ass. What are you gonna do? man. Number eight, get as rich as quick as you can and then preserve the heck out of that wealth with slower, safer investments. So choose your business, choose your money making areas and choose them wisely because some businesses are terrible businesses to run. Like a lot of restaurants, for example, some restaurants do make a lot of money, but the vast majority of them barely get by. Some investments can be super low yield and a real pain in the butt, like real estate, right? Other businesses can be super high profit, like basically selling any kind of digital products or investments like crypto can have unimaginable upsides. So use these to build your net worth. Then use boring, slow things like real estate, index funds, etc., to store that wealth so that you keep building the wealth with lower risk in the long run and you hold onto that wealth, most importantly. Number nine, the first $100,000 is hard. The first million is hard, but not as hard as the first 100,000. And the second million is so much easier than the first million. It's all about momentum. Money is about momentum and math, of course. Look, think of it like this. To go from 100K to 1 million requires a 1,000% return. To go from one to 2 million, just have to double a 100% return. The game gets easier the longer you play it. And because it is hard at the start, that's why so many people quit so early and just say, well, it wasn't meant for me, right? They can't make it over those first three hurdles. But if you can, then the big money will come to you and it will come much easier and it gets easier the longer you're in the game. Number 10, understand that there are levels to the game and play accordingly. From zero to 100,000, that's probably not the time to start flying first class. It's not the time to start buying Rolexes. Sorry, I know you want to, but that's not the time to do it. This is the time to spend money, to be rich, not to look 
rich. But as you level up, what becomes possible for you quickly changes. At a million dollar net worth, that Rolex is only one or two percent of your net worth versus 20 percent when you had a hundred thousand dollars. And investing that twenty thousand dollars back when you had a hundred thousand dollars will help you get to the next level much sooner. It's almost like a cheat code by reinvesting money all the time. So make this the early priority, right? Invest to get rich, not to look rich. Learn how to tax yourself harder at the start of this journey if you want to get where you want to go sooner. Because the quicker you can level up, then the quicker you can get the prizes, the Rolexes, the first class flights, all that jazz. Try to get the prizes too soon and it actually slows your progress down and it takes you longer to level up and longer to get the bigger prizes and more consistently, right? Number 11, take your time when buying. Be wary of pressure tactics from salesmen and people on social media and all that kind of stuff. There's almost never a reason to rush to buy things. They just wanna make the sale. They wanna get you to FOMO, whatever it is. Don't FOMO, take your time. There's always more opportunities. Always more opportunities. Remember, power or no, right? That's not to say you need to be in constant analysis, paralysis, and never do anything. But instead, be cool, be calm, be clear with your emotions. Don't give in to those time pressures, which are often artificial anyway. Now, something I tell my wife is, yes, we can afford to buy that, but do we actually need to buy it? For example, buying another car would be cool, right? But we wouldn't really use it very much. It would just be in the way all the time. We'd probably end up selling it for a massive loss as you do with new cars and spend much time getting registrations, all this BS. Then you have to sell it, which means you have to find somebody to buy it and do the, re I just, it's a lot of extra work. Buying is easy. Swiping the car to make the purchase, that's the easy part. But then getting rid of it later is hard. So start to think about what you're letting into your life when you say yes to a purchase, right? It's easy to buy, Hard to get out. Number 12, fear and greed are your enemy. Treat them as such. They are both dangerous. Fear will make you accept massive losses and keep you from taking the risks needed to make millions. Greed, on the other end of the spectrum, will lure you into buying high and a hundred other dumb money decisions, right? One thing that can really, really help with this is just thinking long term. Might sound obvious, but it's true. Those emotions feel a lot less urgent when you're thinking across a five year timeline. Remember, we overestimate what we can do in a year and we underestimate what we can do in five years. So try to think long term about these things. Don't try to chase those overnight get rich fantasies. Number 13, don't lose money or at least try to lose as little as possible, right? Uh, we all lost money investing without a doubt, but try to lose as little as possible. Always think about how shit can go wrong when you enter a new investment, a new coin, a new side hustle, a new business venture, whatever the heck it's gonna be. If you invest and it goes to zero, how's that gonna work out for you? If you buy the Rolex and it gets stolen or whatever the situation may be, if it happens and it ruins you emotionally and financially, then don't do it in the first place. So think about how you scale your risk and scale your risk according to what you can actually emotionally handle at that particular time. Okay, that's it. I hope it was useful for you. Subscribe now. I'll see you next time.